Hello. You are looking at a live video feed of our launch pad at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. My name is Rachel, and I'm an integration engineer here at Eon Space. Today we are hoping to launch the Arcturus L9 mission, consisting of 22 Arcturus satellites, to low Earth orbit on an Auriga Max rocket. Arcturus is Eon Space's state-of-the-art communication network, enabled by a mega constellation of satellites. So far, we have launched three previous Arcturus missions on our own rockets, with two of those being the current Gen 2 satellites. In order to enter full operation sooner, we contracted with several other SFS launch providers to launch additional Arcturus missions. Cobra Seal Space, or CSSE, has launched four missions, and Novax has launched one. In addition to this launch being the return to flight of Arcturus on our own launch vehicle, it will also place the 100th satellite into orbit. Let's get to know the rocket you are seeing right now a little better. Auriga Max Block 2.1 is our medium lift, two-stage, partially reusable orbital launcher. The first stage has three AX2 engines which burn a mixture of methane and liquid oxygen, also known as methalox. Following stage separation, the first stage booster performs several more burns to autonomously bring itself back home to land on ground or even a seagoing vessel. This enables us to recover and reuse our rockets, lowering the cost of spaceflight. The second stage features a single A X2U engine, which is optimized for use in the vacuum of space. It also uses methalox as propellant and gives the payload the final push to orbit. The upper stage has the capability of performing several relights while in space, which lets us target a wider range of specific orbits. Auriga Max is the most efficient and capable rocket on the SFS market, which is why so many customers trust us with their payloads. To book a launch of your own, join our official Discord server using the link in the description and fill out our launch services form. Liftoff is scheduled to occur about three minutes from now. The action doesn't just begin at T0, however, as there are several key milestones that will be happening before then. The first event is the completion of propellant loading on both stages of the rocket, which should wrap up any second now. Next up will be the retraction of the strongback, which is the large black structure next to the rocket. It will swing away to avoid being damaged as the rocket lifts off. Shortly after that, at T minus one minute, the rocket will transition from ground power to its onboard or internal power. At this point, the rocket will be in control of itself and will be autonomously progressing through the final minute of the countdown. At 45 seconds to liftoff, the launch director will confirm that all systems are go for flight. You can tell that this booster looks a little dirty and charred, and that's because it's flown on a previous mission. This particular booster will be flying for its second time and will attempt an RTLS landing at landing zone one, located right by the launch pad you are looking at right now. Following stage separation, it will perform a boost back burn, which cancels out its horizontal downrange velocity and sends it back on a course to the launch site. As it approaches Earth's atmosphere, an entry burn will be performed to reduce the aerodynamic and thermal stress on the vehicle. Finally, there's the landing burn, which takes it all the way down to a soft touchdown. At the same time, the upper stage will insert itself into orbit and begin a coast phase. As we intend to have Arcturus missions become more and more frequent, we will start ending the broadcast shortly after Sea Co and booster landing, as well as going no commentary for those launches in the future. You can follow us on social media for confirmation of nominal orbit insertion and payload deployment later today. You can see the strong back retracting right now. The transition to internal power is coming up in about 15 seconds, at T minus one minute. I'll resume commentary following liftoff, so see you on the other side. Vehicles at startup. Minus 30 seconds. T 
minus 20 seconds. T minus 15. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 0. Stage 1 center. Section 57, post launch operations. Welcome back to the sky, Arcturus and Auriga. The vehicle has cleared max Q, the point where the aerodynamic stress on the rocket is at its peak during ascent. Coming up shortly, we should see main engine cutoff, stage separation, upper stage engine ignition, and first stage boost back burn startup all happen back to back. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Ignition. Stage one boost back startup. Both vehicles have successfully separated from each other and are now following their respective flight profiles. The next major event is fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. And there's the call out, confirming that the fairing has split in half and fallen away from the second stage. Incredible views of our Auriga booster performing its boost back burn. Stage 2 continuing to perform nominally, and you can now see all 22 Arcturus satellites exposed to the vacuum of space. It did appear that the first stage's boost back burn was cut short, and we lost the video feed. Standing by for more information there from the control team. the team can confirm that we have lost the first stage booster. As a reminder, the first stage descent and landing was only a secondary mission. The primary mission of getting to orbit and deploying the payload is still going smoothly. Stage two is continuing to perform as expected, and we are coming up on second engine cutoff one before entering the coast phase. Seco. The upper stage has completed its first burn, and will now begin coasting through space before preforming a second burn to enter orbit and deploy all 22 satellites. This brings our live coverage to a close. You can follow us on social media for confirmation of payload deployment later today. We were unfortunately not able to recover the first stage due to an anomaly that occurred during the boost back burn, and we will work with the FAA to determine the cause of that failure. Thank you all for joining us today, and we'll see you next time for Mission 42 the launch of Orca Sat.